Thank you for joining us for this presentation of Basics Communication. The Communication VP or Chair position is very important to PTA. Without you, it is nearly impossible to ensure that PTA's message is shared wide and far and as consistently as possible. This workshop is intended to give you the tools you need to have a successful tenure in the communications position. It will cover job-specific responsibilities of the position and related subcommittees, the nuts and bolts of communications and PTA-related contacts and resources, the Texas PTA bylaws template for local and council PTA bylaws will not contain any specific duties for the communications position. Specific duties for the communication position will be in the local or council PTA's standing rules. Here are some examples of items that may appear in the standing rules. Identify and utilize technology applications applicable and relevant to the message and audience. Do this by analyzing campus, community demographics, are they likely to have computers, smartphones, etc.? Or is a paper-based system best? Determine what the best method is to use to reach your school community. Communicate relevant content in a timely, regular manner. Remember, a poorly timed send or sending emails too often or not often enough can break your campaign and make it a complete waste of time. Keep website and or social media posts current. This is incredibly important. Stale info is a website, post killer, people won't return after a single visit if the information is too old. Work with community and school district communications director to promote PTA, its activities, and sponsored events. Start with your school district or school campus. Many of the school district media outlets, website, calendar, email, need content and are happy to promote PTA events. In addition, most local newspapers have sections for community-generated events. Find out how best to contribute to these local options to share what your PTA is doing. In your role as communications, be sure to read your PTA standing rules to learn more about your specific duties. The Texas PTA bylaws template for local and council PTA bylaws will not contain any specific duties for the communications position. There are multiple ways the communications positions can be configured on your executive board. The structure on the left shows a standing committee chair for each of the major communications positions. Each of these chairs would serve as standing committee chairs on the executive board. The configuration on the right shows a single overarching communications executive board position, vice president or chair, with subcommittee chairs to provide the specifics. Only the communications chair would serve on the board, the subcommittee chairs would report to the communications VP or chair, who then reports to the executive board. This structure has advantages if reaching a quorum has become a problem. Choose one of the many variations that will serve your PTA best. Keeping in mind that the format is based on volunteer availability and ability. A written plan helps keep you focused and organized. It should outline the communications goals for the year and contain any anticipated expenditures. You cannot begin work until your plan of work is approved by the executive board. Per the bylaws, all executive board members are required to complete a plan of work. The communications position will have a variety of ways in which to communicate information. Through conventional methods of print media like newsletters, flyers, newspapers, and magazines and possibly that of traditional broadcast media such as television or radio. Through internet-based methods like electronic newsletters, emails, PTA websites, and social media platforms. These various methods represent the major categories of your overall communications plan. When developing your communications strategy, the most important question is, who is my audience? The answer to that question will drive all content and will help answer the next two questions. What appeals to them? What do they find relevant? Example, if your audience is parents of elementary students, then an article about Halloween safety is probably more relevant than one on texting and driving. Both are great articles, but one is more relevant and more likely to be read by that audience. How should your communications be delivered? What are your campus's demographics? Is everyone connected? Would they prefer a paper newsletter or a mobile app? The answers to these questions mark the difference between a successful communications plan and an unsuccessful one. If you're unsure, don't guess, survey your audience and plan accordingly. The process of acquiring and distributing information is basically the same regardless of the communication method, 
Whether you're doing a website or newsletter, the process doesn't vary much. The first step in the process is to acquire content. As a communications chair, your responsibility is to acquire content, not necessarily to create it. You should edit the article for punctuation, grammar, spelling, etc., but not rewrite the article for the submitter. Content can come from a variety of sources. It's important to give your sources a deadline for their submissions, which will give them ample opportunity to create content and give you ample opportunity to edit and deliver. Your distribution method and frequency are also part of your overall communications plan. How are you going to deliver your newsletter, printed copies or electronic? How often are you going to send it out? There are pitfalls to too much or too little communication. The optimum frequency is dependent on your audience. Research indicates that Wednesday and Sunday nights are the best time to distribute correspondence. It's important to have others check your work. You may have missed some typos or edited someone's article to convey a different meaning. At a minimum, allow the principal, president, and all contributors to review the information and give them a deadline for completion. Look up associated press style guides for rules on grammar, spelling, punctuation, and usage. In most cases, it does not need to be the latest version, so a used book is perfectly fine. Privacy is a growing concern in this digital age, and it is important that your PTA adheres to your school district's privacy policy. Consult with the district's communications director for the details. Review your communications to make sure personal information is not being disclosed, names, email addresses, phone numbers, addresses, etc. And ensure the individuals have given their permission to use their image, name, and contact information. If in doubt, ask them. Consult with your school district's photo release policy. If the PTA documents and publications are not covered in this release, you will need to gain releases before publishing or posting photos with children. Rephrase your message using more generic terminology, students, rather than Mrs. Trout's first grade class. A lot also depends on the scope of your audience, if your target audience is only your campus, you'll have more leeway. Search the web for royalty-free images to use. Students running toward a bus convey the same message as our specific students running toward a school bus. Content is king, pictures and charts are relevant if the message is off the mark. Content requirements are basically the same across all communications disciplines. What makes a story newsworthy? Before you begin planning articles, make sure the article topics are newsworthy. The following elements may serve as guidelines in judging newsworthiness. Timeliness, people are interested in events that have just happened or that are being reported for the first time. Location, people are interested in news that occurs close to home or in their immediate area. Significance, events which affect the lives of others are newsworthy. The greater the effect, the more newsworthy it becomes. Human interest, people are interested in the lives of others. Stories that appeal to their emotions attract readers. Some content, like meeting minutes, bylaws, budgets, and financial reports, should not be included if the communication is accessed by non-members. These can be included if PTA members are the only ones who receive the items. Our bylaws define membership, and Robert's rules of order state that only members have the right to see these documents. Branding is defined as the process of creating a unique name and image for product, goods or services, in the consumer's mind through consistent advertising campaigns. The easiest way to brand your PTA communications is with a logo. The Texers and national PTA websites offer information on the official use of font, color, logo, and tagline. These websites also have tools to help you create your PTA's standard logo. Texas PTA offers a variety of turnkey branding options at txpta.org forward slash back dash the dash future that are made for you to use. Don't hesitate to incorporate these tools into your local PTA's messaging. Email can be a powerful mechanism to provide immediate information to a large audience. Typical usage includes Distributing newsletters, link and or attachment. Sending e-blasts, short, time-critical announcements. There are various mass email, electronic newsletter applications available, including Constant Contact, MailChimp, and Emma. These companies charge a fee based on the number of email addresses in their contact list. There are also free utilities that provide similar functionality and ease of use. Try to avoid using personal email accounts to send mass mailings. 
It's not uncommon for an internet provider to suspend an account it suspects is sending spam, and sending emails to hundreds of recipients in a day triggers that suspicion. But if this method is your only option, make sure you blind copy all recipients to avoid disclosing everyone's email address. Newsletter types include Traditional print newsletter. This is the type of newsletter that goes home in a Tuesday folder or is available in the office. Hybrid newsletters are one step up the technology ladder in that they are created to be printed but are conferred to an electronic format and either posted on a website or attached to an email. E-newsletters are created, distributed, and reside online. They are typically created with a mass email or website editing tool. The advantages of this are no printing costs on all of the internet's conventions, images, links, resources, etc. An example of this would be a headline with a link to the body of the article. One of the best things you can do for the visibility and accessibility of your website is to register a domain, yourptaname.org or .com. .org because your PTA is a non-profit entity. .com because frankly, not everyone will remember .org. Plus you don't want anyone else registering their .com domain and posting decidedly non-PTA content. Domain registration typically is a low sum well worth paying. Have the domain registration belong to the PTA, not to the individual registering the domain. Many domain registrars provide free email forwarding as part of the domain purchase. With email forwarding, you can set up position-specific email addresses that will forward emails to an account of your choosing. Thus, you can post an email address publicly without disclosing a home email address. When creating a website, you'll determine where in cyberspace your website will reside. This is their host. There are many web hosting services from which to choose, with a variety of fee structures to match, including free sites. So it's a good idea to review your needs and match them to a service. Many school districts will provide web space to PTAs by campus at no charge. One typical drawback to this scenario is that district personnel are usually the only ones authorized to make updates, meaning the PTA may not have direct access to their own site and must rely on the schedule and benevolence of the staff member. Create and update your website with maintainability in mind. Be mindful of what software and skills will be required of the next webmaster, and try to stick with the tools most people already have. Appeal, what appeals to you? Find a great website and pattern yours after it. In terms of tools, pricey, specialized web development software is practically a thing of the past for PTA webmasters. Most hosting services provide online website development software to develop and maintain a website from anywhere on any computer. Many tools, like WordPress, allow plugins, which are specialized software applications that can be incorporated into a website, like calendars or surveys. Social media refers to the means of interaction in which people create, share, exchange, and comment on content in virtual communities. It introduces substantial and pervasive changes to communication between organizations, communities, and individuals. Many people rely on social media as their means of communication, transcending phone, email, text. These sites are easily accessed with a smartphone, making them a powerful communication tool for PTAs. Your PTA executive board should determine whether members should post on these sites. In addition, the executive board should consider two other items when it comes to social media. The first is incorporating a social media policy. A sample social media policy is available to use as a template on the Texas PTA Policies web page. The other item is in regards to insurance and a media liability upgrade on your general liability insurance that can protect the local PTA from misuse of your content on your website or social media platforms. Social media platforms and phone apps are frequently changing, so you will need to find the tools that work best for your community based on where they spend their social media capital. A few possible examples are Blogs allows PTAs to tell their stories, break news, comment on breaking news, and share resources quickly. Facebook is free advertising and promotion for your local PTA. It allows you to share information with your members, start conversations on various topics, and give them the chance to share with their friends as well. X is primarily used for sharing information about a product, brand, or program. It is also used to make announcements and share breaking news. YouTube lets people upload online videos and participate in free video sharing, commenting, liking, and reposting. 
Instagram lets people upload online photos, much in the same way as YouTube is used for videos. Pinterest is a pinboard-style social photo-sharing website that allows users to create and manage theme-based image collections, such as events, interests, hobbies, and more. The PTA defines public relations as winning public recognition and support for its goals and programs while meeting the needs of a targeted audience. Public relations involves creating and cultivating relationships with traditional media, such as print, radio, and television. It is in the PTA's best interest to befriend the media by meeting their deadlines, providing them with newsworthy information, and displaying an appreciative attitude regarding their coverage, whether great or small. It is the local PTA's responsibility to provide the media with interesting, newsworthy, and timely information. You can broaden the support of your local or council PTA by becoming involved in your business and civic community. The most important factor is that the partnership is a good match for the business or community group, as well as for the PTA, the school, and the students. Communication is a critical part of crisis management, which is why it's important to have a plan in place before the need arises. If your PTA belongs to a council, notify your council president of the crisis so that they can act as an additional resource and give support during this time. The first step in the plan is to designate a spokesperson. This is logically the PTA president, but they may feel unprepared for this role outlined in the bylaws and may delegate that responsibility, with the executive board's approval, to someone else. It's important to follow school district procedures. Consult with the district communications director at the first sign of a problem. They are skilled at speaking to a crisis, much more so than a volunteer. There's no shame in directing all communications to the communication director in a crisis, with their consent, better than making the situation worse. If the situation calls for a statement on behalf of the PTA, make sure the membership has voted to take a position on the topic before speaking to it. Otherwise, the statement is personal and not reflective of the PTA. Texas PTA staff and volunteer leaders are here to answer any questions you may have about your position. Our toll-free number is 1-800-TALK-PTA, or you can email us directly. Thank you for attending Basics, Communication. Our intent is for this training to be beneficial and make your work in PTA easier and more enjoyable. If you have any questions in the future, please know that your field service representative and council leaders are always ready to help. Or you may reach out to TXPTA's VP Leadership at vpl at txpta.org.